Hey, welcome. And my name is Jody Scholes. I am your uh, instructor for the Emblex Review course. Uh, and we've got a full house today. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the class. So today, uh, classes, again, welcome to the Emblex Review course. Uh, today, we are going to be studying ethics, boundaries, laws, and regulations. And so this is a very specific section um, of the test that you can see in the content outline. There are two sections on business, what some people would kind of lump into calling business, and that's guidelines to a professional practice, and then all this stuff about ethics and boundaries and laws and regulations. And so those two sections of your test are 31% of the test. So doing meaningful homework has two aspects. One is to look at the content outline and confirm what you're studying is actually on the test. They change it up. Right now, we don't need to know anything about the history of massage. However, how much Asian body work do you need to understand? Um, the content outline will give you those answers. For example, you don't need to know the path of a meridian, um, but you do need to know what bodywork modality uses meridians. So some general over uh, some overviews of uh, the stuff, and that's found on the content outline. Additionally, meaningful homework has a second point of view, and that is in doing the practice exams, think about how you wanna tackle the exam. You can go into it two ways. One, you're gonna get some help. Two, you're not. So number one, go, go through the test. When you get stuck with a question, Google a word, Google um, the topic. See if you can get to the best answer. That's one way to approach it. That is very meaningful homework. It's substantial. You're getting something out of it. You're learning. You're starting to know what you don't know. That's cool. That's great. Uh, on the practice exams, let me assure you, with this practice exam that you do through this course, it's a bit, it's a beast. Um, it's a beast. Um, there are some questions on there that are just really tough. And luckily, I mean, the reason I do this is because I spent um, many years, uh, and I still am a member of the Alliance for massage therapy education. And I got to meet and become friends with and colleagues with these amazing educators, these amazing, amazing teachers. Uh, and I got to ask them to write me questions that were like the Emblex. And these are people who used to be test question writers. So they've actually written. Now, these are not the questions that are on the Emblex but they're very similar. And so it's lovely to go through this test. Just know if you come up against a question that seems ridiculous, like something to do with like mitosis of the cell, just know that you don't have to know all of it. You only have to pass the test with a 70. I mentioned the practice exams and one of two ways to approach the practice exam in doing meaningful homework. The first was to get some help. The second was not. Once you are within 30 days of taking your MLEX, time to go with no help and to get a real picture of where you're at. Now, there are times when you take the practice exam that there's a little freak out moment. It could make you feel a kind of a certain way. Um, could make you feel like uh, like I did the other day on the tennis court. I was like playing tennis and I was actually taking a lesson and I could I felt completely incompetent. I mean, literally I felt like I was about to cry because I'm like, I know how to play tennis. I like what's going on. And I was learning some new stuff and it made me feel a certain kind of way. Like I was dumb, like I was incompetent like I hadn't made as much progress as I thought. Sound familiar? Yeah. 
I had to take a moment and change my state. Now I have to admit it didn't happen until after I got done the lesson, um, but I was able to recognize it. And that feeling, if you're getting a feeling while taking the practice exam, or some of you have failed forward or have had that feeling during the MBLEX, I would much rather you practice and become self-aware if you're having a feeling and be like, okay, I am not my feelings. I can kind of put it in, I can put it in a box. I can put it in a bottle, put it in a jar, put the lid on and it's over there. When we become self-aware, which we can do during the practice exams, especially when you start taking them without help, once we become self-aware of how we feel about that, we can put it in the jar, put the lid on and be like, okay, I'm just having a feeling. I'll come back to that in a minute, but let me stay focused on this test. So we don't have to go down into the, um, what is that called? The thing where it sucks everything, the black hole, if you will. It suck, gets sucked into the black hole of emotions. No. When we become self-aware, when we become an observer of ourself, you'd be like, okay, I'm freaking out here. No, my, my default is I blame. Like, I'm like, oh, they're not a good teacher. Oh, they're not a, uh, that's not a, a fair test question. Oh, that's not you know, an easy drill. But you know what though? When we point out, when we point out, there are three fingers pointing right back at us because it's really about us. It's really about me. And so just do the dance, you know, just be prepared to do the dance. You've come here because you are meant to be a licensed massage therapist. And part of becoming a licensed massage therapist is doing the dance with this test and uh, learning a new step, which is doing meaningful homework. We have plenty to cover today. So I am going to switch gears and uh, bring us into our learning for the day. All right, everybody's in. So as we um, embark on this journey of the class, you know, the, the study, in studying um, ethics, boundaries, laws, and regulations, you may scratch your head. You may say, uh, I don't remember learning this stuff. That's okay. Don't worry. That's why we're reviewing it. And if you need a deeper dive, there are tutoring sessions available. Just hit me up on the message board and I'll send you the link to my schedule and to the price list and all that. Um, but just so you know, it's 50 bucks for 75 minutes if you are in this community. Um, it's not that price if you're outside the community. But just know you might feel like, oh, you know, hmm, not sure I'm, I learned this in massage school. That's okay. That's why you're here. And every massage school is different. Some covers this stuff, some doesn't. And they cover it in different ways. But here's what you're going to need to know to pass the MBLEX. Our class is on boundaries, laws, rules, regulations, ethics. And here's the outline of what we're going to cover today. So ethical behavior, professional boundaries, code of ethic violations, um, therapeutic relationship, dual relationships, um, laws and regulations, the scope of practice. Uh, we're going to cover principles as well. We're not going to get to I and J today, I don't think. Uh, but wanted to give a shout out to Ben Benjamin and my friend, uh, Sheree Sona Mo. She was uh, right here, see? She was president of the Alliance for Massage Therapy Education for many years. She wrote this textbook, The Ethics of Touch, along with Ben Benjamin. And it's where I'll draw a lot of this material for today's class. Let's first start off with ethical behavior. What does that even mean? So let's walk through what ethics looks like according to the National Certification Board of Therapeutic Massage and Bodywork. 
So as a licensed therapist, you will act in a manner that justifies the public's trust in you. You will act in a manner that builds confidence and enhances the reputation uh, of our profession. So knowing that when you are practicing massage therapy, yes, you might be practicing alone. You might be a sole proprietor renting an office, but you still stand on behalf of all massage therapists and the profession. What does that look like? Well, provide high quality care, be honest, um, accurately discuss with the clients the scope of your practice, the limitations. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, an ethical therapist will also acknowledge their limitations and provide treatment when it's beneficial to the client not when it's not beneficial. We've talked about general versus local contraindications. So we'll provide treatment when it's beneficial and it's not going to cause the client harm. Uh, we're going to improve, maintain and improve our uh, continuing education, our professional knowledge. We're gonna begin to be honest and have integrity with our business practices. We're not gonna unjustly discriminate um, we're going to maintain con confidentiality. Uh, we're going to practice using informed consent. Uh, there's more. We're going to respect the client's um, right to, to modify or to end the session. The client is in somewhat in control. We're in control of the space, but if the client wants to modify the, the session, um, needs to give you information that they need to end the session, we're going to respect that. Uh, we're also going to be respectful with our draping. We're going to use modest draping that ensures safety, comfort, and privacy. Uh, we, as part of our code of ethics, have the right to refuse treatment. If someone comes in uh, and they're hammered uh, or they seem crazy, that's a generality. If someone is to come in under the influence, we have the right to refuse service. Uh, no initiating or engaging in any sexual contact uh, and avoid any activity um, which might not, which might be in conflict in the, of the best interests of the client. So acting with integrity, this is our code of ethics. We have one more page. Uh, Respect the client's boundaries with regard to privacy. Don't expose areas that they don't want exposed. Case in point, glutes. We would need informed consent to work on the glutes if we were going to expose them. So we need to let them know not only we're going to work on them, but whether or not you're going to move the sheet. Informed consent and respect for client's boundaries. Uh, we also have the code of ethics that says, uh, don't take any gifts from your clients. Now there's gray area there, right? Holidays, birthdays, but if the client is trying to gain personal favor in the sense that, oh, you know, I gave you such a big gift. Um, now you'll work on me anytime I want. Uh, you're available now 24 seven. Just be clear with our boundaries. We'll talk a little bit more about that later in class. And then follow the NCB standards of practice and this code of ethics. Um, and that is in general, what ethical behavior looks like. Now, we talked about discrimination and this is a big part of our ethical behavior. It is essential that we create safe space non-judgmental space for all of our clients. And be careful about stereotyping. Have you ever been stereotyped? Someone looks at you and thinks, you know, labels you? If you were to have this client walk in, what can you tell me about this person? Maybe you have an opinion about fur. Maybe um, 
she looks despondent or sad. But truth be told, this is Zoe Kravitz walking through LA airport. She's in a Fendi faux fur. Zoe Kravitz is the daughter of Lenny Kravitz and Lisa Bonet. Say this person were to walk into your office. What can you tell me about this person? If you were just going to look at them and say, okay, I'm about to treat this person. What's going on here? You know, looks like we may have got some dreads, you know, um, does this, does this, does this person seem warm and welcoming? It actually really doesn't matter. You know, you may have a thought about what this person looks like, but this happens to be DeAndre Hopkins. He's a professional football player for the Arizona Cardinals. And he was actually voted one of the best dressed. I know. <laughs> Go figure, huh? Speaking of stereotyping, what can you tell me about this person? This is Polynesian tattoos. Maybe they're from Hawaii. But imagine this guy arrives, not with all the greens, you know, with all the leaves in his hair. Uh, but imagine this guy arrives and you don't know until, you know, he's on the table that he's got tats. It's like, whoa. Again, safe, non-judgmental space is a part of your ethical responsibility. You know, we can't judge a book by its cover, right? I had a licensed massage therapist tell me that she gets judged all the time because of her size. She's five foot two. She's not of a large carriage. And when her clients come in, they're like, oh no, she's going to be my therapist. And so judgment goes both ways. We may see someone and think, oh my goodness, what's their story? And yet, our job is to be curious when it comes to our clients, but our, it's also our job to be patient if our clients are stereotyping us. We hold the high watch. We are the ones responsible for creating safe, non-judgmental space. And so whether you're feeling a certain way about working on Adam Levine, you know, who's this character here, um, or, you're getting judged by a client, stay calm. Be an observer of the situation. And continue by your demeanor, by your behavior, to create that safe, non judgmental space. All right. That's a little bit about your ethical behavior. <laughs> now let's talk about professional boundaries. So when we're talking about two countries, we're talking about boundaries. There's usually like a fence in between them. This one has a fence with some barbed wire, but if there's a clear demarcation of what is the United States and what is Canada. There's a, just a clear boundary. This is the US, there's the, the customs and on the other side, is Canada. Our ethical boundaries need to be that clear. So let's walk through them. Let's talk. My cup says, keep calm and change healthcare. Want to join me? <laughs> let's keep calm, let's change healthcare. Let's get you to be a licensed massage therapist. Next question. A female client says you remind them of their dearly departed aunt. The aunt was a mother figure to her. You can tell the client is getting a bit emotional talking about the aunt. She mentions they, they always went to the theater together. She asks if you go to the theater. What is this an example of? 
A, boundary crossing. B, boundary violation. C, countertransference. D, transference. I see some answers coming in. Ayete, hello. Hey, Heather. Let's get rid of one wrong answer. It's not a boundary violation, right? This female client is not violating your boundaries. You're not violating her boundaries. We're getting there. Keep trying, Winnie. You're getting there. Keep trying. <laughs> All right. Best answer is transference. This is an example of the female client feeling a certain way about their daily departed aunt. Oh, you remind me of her. We always do you go to the we always went to the theater. Do you go to the theater? She's transferred. So just be cautious if and when this happens. It's a lovely, a lovely emotion. It's just not really about you. Ooh, big one. Your former teacher now works at Starbucks. You see him several mornings a week. Then one evening you see him at your gym. You both laugh and make a joke. He asks what you do for a living. When he finds out you're a licensed massage therapist, he says he should make an appointment and come in for a massage. He asks for your business card. What happens next? A, you give him a business card and plan to charge him extra because he gave you a C plus in class. B, you give him a business card but plan to ignore his calls because this is a boundary violation. C, you give him a card and we'll be happy to see him. This is an example of multidimensional relationship. D, you, you tell him you can't give him a massage because it would create a dual relationship. Best answer. All right, make sure to read them all the way through. Let's get rid of one answer that we know isn't right. We're not gonna charge him extra because he gave you a C in class. Have you put in what you think is your best answer? I see different answers. Okay, best answer, C. You give him a card and we'll be happy to see him. This is an example of a multi-dimensional relationship. Just have to keep those boundaries clear, right? So if you're back at the gym, say he comes in, gets a massage, you're back at the gym and you know, you're chatting. You're not gonna talk about the massage session unless he does. You're not gonna bring up he's a massage client. It's like, oh, how do you guys know each other? Oh, it's my teacher. He, you know, I see him at Starbucks or both, you know. And if he says, oh yeah, and she's a great massage therapist, bonus. The client ethically initiates the acknowledgement of the relationship, the therapeutic relationship. Okay, quick, quick, uh, rapid fire. Ready? You see a client at church. Is this a boundary crossing or boundary violation? You see your client at church. Boundary crossing, boundary violation. Boundary crossing. Boundary crossing. Yes, that, yep, yep, good. Shout it out, we got two more. Uh, going to dinner with a client, boundary crossing, boundary violation. Boundary going violation. 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 violation, boom. It's compromising the therapeutic relationship. Wine, there's wine on that table. Big no, no, big red flag, okay. Last one, boundary crossing or boundary violation? Before you answer, look at what's on the text message. This boundary is a, violation. 
<laughs> so, right. Boundary violation for yeah. sure. Yes, exactly, exactly. And so, the, great, great. And so, now we, you may choose to text message your clients to confirm an appointment, to send an appointment reminder. But this text message, oh, I've been thinking of you every second since you left. Bah! Found your violation. Right on, right on. Boop, boop, boop. That is it for today. All right. <laughs> Good work today. Um, so, so we covered a lot of ground today on ethics. We did. We covered a lot of ground today on boundaries. Uh, we touched base on those laws and regulations. Um, great work today, you guys, and hanging in there. Uh, I'll remind you, my name is Jody Skulls. Uh, I am your instructor for the Emblex. Hey there. If you want to see the full video on ethics, laws, regulations, boundaries, uh, join us over at Patreon, the Patreon community. Patreon.com backslash Jody Skulls. The link will be here uh, posted in the uh, comments. So hope you're having a great week. And uh, if you need some accountability, if you want a community that's going to help you get over this hump of passing the Amplex, come join us. Have a great day. <laughs>